want to hit record. Great. So um, good evening, guys. So the first thing out the gate I'll mention in announcements is um, grading. So the grading has not been updated. So I know a few folks are asking a few questions like, are they done? Are they done? Are they done? And so, no, they haven't been graded yet, but we will get updates this week. And so um, if you updated, uploaded your files, then they will definitely get um, uh, set up. I think the big one is obviously the principles of design. So that my goal is to get that completed on the grading side. So that's on my to-do list here on the right. Um, and so as long as you're uploading and you're seeing a link um, uploaded on your file, you should be good um, and everything should be set. So uh, do not worry if, it have, if the scores have not been updated. Typically when it comes to like the bigger projects, like this one takes a little bit longer because of the writing component. Um, we, it's important to have writing of course and deconstruct takes a little bit longer on, on my end to sort of grade it. So um, this week it will get updated, we'll get graded. And so you'll get those scores in as soon as possible. Okay. So if you've been emailing me or sending me a couple messages, I totally see you, I totally hear you. Um, again, those scores will get updated uh, all this week and then uh, we'll, we'll calibrate everything accordingly and modify um, the grade. So do not despair. Um, it's just uh, just a timing thing at this point. Okay. So, um, and if things come in a little bit later, uh, that's fine. I think if it's like, you know, a couple days late, no worries. Um, if you're pushing a week to two weeks, um, keep me in the loop, let me know. Um, because obviously we're recording and we have videos and those are there to support you. So just wanted to give you guys a, a quick heads up on that as well. Okay, so if that works, you can give me a little thumbs up emoji um, and we can get you rocking and rolling uh, from there. Okay, okay, very cool. Um, the other thing is the discussion post. So I'm gonna switch over to student view. Uh, discussions are always 10 points each. So, um, you know, when we get to week 10 and you do all discussions, it's literally a hundred points worth of assignments in there. So that's awesome. So, um, you know, I know we had pushed off discussions for the Adobe Illustrator story. So for that one, definitely, um, you know, if we have some time, um, I wanna kind of push that in. Uh, I think I'll play maybe like about five or six minutes of the Adobe Illustrator story. Um, and I'm not sure how many folks have entered. It looks like a good number of you actually have, so that's a good sign. And if anyone is still pending, um, take a moment to, to watch that video. And just out of curiosity, how many of you guys have completed the uh, Adobe Illustrator story? Got to watch that video a little bit and update it. Just kind of want to see a quick show of thumbs up of the folks that have. Um, that way we can kind of gauge it. Okay, so almost almost half the class. Um, if you haven't uh, watched it, take a look at it. It's really a, a cool um, 20, 19 minute video talking about this, the history of the program, how it came about, and, and more importantly, what it was like before computers. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine doing some of the things that were done pre-computer, right? Um, probably some of us wouldn't be in this field um, or trying to pursue it if there wasn't a computer. They used to do things by hand, and you get to hear from a lot of other artists, the, the artists that actually went through that process, right? Um, and so for sure, definitely take a moment to see that. It's 10 points and that'll be sort of the opening um, for that. So um, if you got some time, go for it. Uh, make sure you get a, a chance to kind of watch that and then we'll set you up there. I see a few uh, folks have already entered. So thank you for doing that guys, I appreciate it. Um, but get some perspective. I think it's good to know the history of the program, get an understanding of the mindset um, and so that it kind of gives you an, a nice, well-rounded opinion on the program too, okay? So um, just something there that'll save on time so that we can um, make sure that you kind of watch that. So if you're driving to work, you're in between classes or you're, or you're having lunch, just you know pull up your phone uh, if you have the Canvas app and watch it for like 20 minutes, right? And the question is really simple, is just basically what was it like? You know, um, how much is this, how much is graphic design advanced from you know, the 1987 and so, um, and share some thoughts. Okay. And so that's going to be a really uh, helpful thing there. Um, it's more, it's more perspectives and more history than anything on the program. So definitely take a look at it again, 10 points, all the discussions add up to, uh, add up eventually to like almost a full project. So definitely want to encourage you guys to get that going. Okay. And then for this week, we're going to be exploring the pen tool. <clears throat> so, We'll look at the objective in a couple of seconds, but this, uh, the discussion for this week is actually, um, we could do this during our break 
and we can go over that in a little bit because I want to kind of get started on the pen tool this evening. But it's a game. So the discussion this evening um, or for this week is actually um, a, a game called the uh, Bezier game or the Bezier curve game, which um, I'll walk you through that process, but there's a couple ways you can solve it. It's basically a pen tool game at the end of the, at the, end of the day created by a designer for designers. So um, it doesn't track your progress, but it's a cool way to kind of see how, um, how stable your hand is or your mouse is when it comes to tracing using the pen tool. So there's a couple of tricks that go into it and um, it uses one or two techniques that I'm, I'm gonna hold off on showing you um, starting, but we'll kind of cover it during the break or when we get back from break so you can kind of play around with it, okay? So um, it's a fun game. It, it's, it's an easy 10 points because you get to play the game. So as long as you take a few minutes to play it um, and try to clear some of the stages, it's really, really fun, really cool. And again, it's designed uh, by designers for designers to set that up. Oh, great. And some of your teachers, it sounds like Philip exposed you to it. So um, yeah, it's a great way to engage. And it's from a company or actually a, um, a small project called Method. And so method.ac is called method of action. And there are more games. And this uh, designer, I think, created the game, the Bezier Curve game, and saw how popular it was with the lots of designers that he created more games, like the color game, or the Kern lettering game, or the um, shape type or letter alphabet game, or the Boolean game, and even created a little mini version of Illustrator uh, with no registration required. So. He has been very, very busy and he does it all by donation. So if you feel like there's something you want to support, go for it. Um, it's a wonderful program. I like, I, I kind of release it here and there, but if you want to practice and have some fun and you're a gamer type, then you can uh, practice design via gaming and that will be um, method.ac. And I'll put the link there for you so you can take a look at it, have some fun. And so we'll, we'll, we'll experiment with one this evening and take a closer look at it as well. So uh, these are some, just some of the cool things that have come along throughout the years of me teaching this uh, course. And so I think it's very helpful. So we got a game resource. We have some artist inspiration um, given to you. Um, and, we, and we have a few updates on just perspective and getting you inspired about the history of the program. There's a lot of, there's a lot of content to soak up in this field of graphic design, especially around the area of Illustrator. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you found it beneficial. And so um, we're gonna jump in and, and talk about our lesson for this evening and start practicing on Illustrator, okay? Work for everybody. Hopefully you found this beneficial, um, but we'll play a little bit, we'll have some fun. And it's an easy 10 points to kind of, to play that game, uh, to set it up, okay? All right, very cool. So again, I um, I'm always have to remind myself like, before you teach, uh, like share some stuff. And so I always try to share as much as I can throughout the years, you know, throughout the time I've been doing this so that hopefully you can get a little bit of a leg up moving forward in your field uh, as well. So um, if you have any resources you want to share with the class, you can put it in the chat and uh, anytime this evening and you can say, oh, I like looking at this site or look, watching this video or I get a lot of inspiration from reading these types of books. Um, and, and I have a lot more to come to um, as well. So I think I have a book cover resource of, of book cover designs that I'll share with you guys when we get to the minimalist poster project. I'll share that with you when we get to that stage as well. Really cool stuff, okay? All right, all right, hopefully this was helpful. Okay guys, so let's transition and let's talk about the goals for this evening or our objective. So we're here, we're actually a pen tool exercise guys. And our objective this evening is to create a series of closed vector objects um, using the pen tool and the anchor point behavior tools, okay? Um, sounds like a mouthful, um, but if you were, uh, were watching or the rebroadcast were with us last week, we basically started uh, a couple of exercises in the pen tool, um, in, the, in the pen tool package, and we're gonna live in this program. And the theory or the idea behind this is that we're going to kind of start off by learning the pen tool techniques, okay? And then we're going to eventually draw a um, basic and uh, a series of basic and complicated shapes, right? Using our pen tool without instructions. You're gonna take these shapes, okay? Not tonight, 
we may or may not get to this stage tonight, but I'm just kind of giving you a roadmap, okay, of the next uh, few classes. Um, we're gonna learn basic pen tool techniques. We're gonna draw with instructions, but then we're gonna draw basic and complicated shapes without instructions. And then we're gonna copy and paste those shapes and start creating characters um, or abstract faces, right? Using those drawn shapes. So a couple examples there, right? Um, to, so to, that'll help us learn a little bit about the selection tool and direct selection tool and copying and pasting and rotation and artboards. So then that stuff is gonna eventually turn into an advanced level pen tool exercise where we kind of do it again, um, what we're doing tonight, but on a deeper level and we draw the Mickey Mouse graphics. So we're actually, um, I'm gonna walk you through creating a production ready uh, piece of art, specifically Mickey, um, which is, um, even though he looks relatively easy, is actually a complex series of shapes and drawings built into him. Um, so we're gonna draw that. Uh, that's a level two, uh, I like to call it, for the exercise, um, to which then I don't have the graphics here, but eventually we're gonna take those images or that Mickey graphic and turn him into a t-shirt, which will lead us into creating t-shirt graphics and learning the basics and how to create a shirt, uh, t-shirt graphic. And specifically a Disney theme one, which will probably be, you know, Halloween related or uh, since we're already in the, in the month of Halloween. So we'll probably make like a Halloween shirt um, of sorts or some type of seasonal shirt of a certain decade. Um, those are always been the two that students really like to uh, play with and approach. So that's the game plan, right? So um, one leads to the other, which leads to the other, which leads to the other. And I kind of designed it that way so that there's no uh, no student left behind. So, uh, at, so if let's say you're out today or tomorrow or this week, you gotta start from the basics and work your way up, right? Um, or at least start with basic and complicated shapes. So there's really no gap um, for the most part. Uh, and it starts from a very basic, no knowledge content uh, area, okay? So I just wanna give you a big picture overview of our plan. And we're gonna start off with our pen tool exercise, okay? So let's, um, let's kind of break it down to just some core basics, uh, the pen tool exercise. Um, for those of us that haven't downloaded it yet, uh, we did for some of us we did last week um, i'm going to share with you the pen tool exercise number one and if you have your pen tool exercise guys then let's open up adobe illustrator and we're going to do the exercises um live together okay so there's really no lecture tonight the lecture is basically step-by-step -step following of how to do these techniques using your computer okay so hopefully you are all at your uh, computers Hopefully um, Adobe Illustrator is in the process of getting open or about to be open, okay? And we're gonna go step-by-step step each baby, each stage of the way, okay? So um, let me go ahead and retrieve the file for you. I'm gonna basically use Canvas to open it up and I'll switch over so then that way um, everyone can get a visual for it. Close out some of those. Uh, tabs before we get that going. Okay. And I'm going to switch over to our canvas shell. And we're going to scroll up to master the pen tool which is week six and week seven okay so i'm going to come down to pen tool exercise part one and i you can click on to it because it is public right now but i'm going to retrieve the link for you what's kind of nice is that um, i also have some old videos that kind of go through some of the stages so I could take a couple of highlighted exercises and put it here as well. So you have that. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the link where you can download Pentel Exercise Part 1. And I'll include that link into the chat right now as well so that the, to just, just save everyone a little bit of time to downloading the, the file, okay? So let's, let me go ahead and share the link. 
And this will be pencil exercise uh, part one, which is the link here in the chat, okay? And you'll basically be downloading your file as we've done before in the past, which is located right here and where the red arrow is pointing. And once you click onto the download button there, if you have Chrome, it should download on the lower left-hand side like mine does. So I'll click onto <clears throat> the arrow and it'll basically load on the lower left-hand side of your screen. And you'll see it here on the lower left. If you have Safari, it'll upload on the upper right-hand side of Safari. Um, and you have to, uh, you can double click onto it and open up your file that way, okay? So, <clears throat> so we got that going. And pushing tools over here. Perfect. We're going to click onto the exercise and it should open my Adobe Illustrator program, which while I will shuffle over here and We'll go ahead and clear this out so that we can see my screen, which I will use the full desktop. So you can kind of see my interface there. Overall, great. We'll deactivate it, do not disturb for mine and perfect. Okay, awesome. So we should see like the full uh, screen here and uh, essentially you, you see your Adobe Illustrator template there, okay? Okay. And if you already have your file open, you can give me a little thumbs up emoji. I just wanna make sure that you can see um, a artboard and the, your basically your essential layout uh, on the left and on the right, just to make sure it's there. Again, um, I'm gonna go step by step and then these files are gonna be uploaded uh, for this week. So you have to make sure you complete each one of them. There's four different files, about eight or so different exercises within that. And so we'll, we'll go step by step to kind of piece it together for you. Okay. And as you can see, I've downloaded it uh, a few times to kind of set that up. So let me go ahead and close like part four uh, and go that route. Okay. So we have our interface, the program's running, everything's looking great. Um, basically, the idea here is that uh, we're going to do each exercise using our pen tool which is located here on your toolbar on the left looks like a pen or a sort of like a fountain pen um, or an old fountain pen those old school pens that you would see so we're going to use that tool represented also by the letter p if you guys recall when we did our, our, our pencil exercises it's a letter p on your keyboard and that's the quick key to activate it so whether you're using your mouse, your trackpad, or, um, or, or clicking onto the letter P, it'll activate the tool for you, okay? So that's the first thing. And then as I'm looking at my interface, um, I'm kind of taking a note about the fill and the outline color. Now, every time I draw a shape, it's um, th the default colors are here in the lower left with the red arrows. Um, white fill on the inside, black border on the outside. So every time we use our pencil and draw, Illustrator kind of assumes that you're drawing a shape with a black border around it and a white inside or fill, if that makes sense. So it, it's all, it just makes that assumption right off the get-go. And so um, when you're drawing anything uh, for the first time, just, have, just kind of store in the back of your mind that it's white on the inside, black on the outside, kind of like, a, um, like cutting a piece of paper, so to speak, right? Um, it just so happens to have a black border. So we're going to give it a fill of none um, so that we can modify it. And so where the fill is over here on the lower left kind of looks like a white square. I'm going to click onto that for just a second so that it's over the stroke or over that black uh, frame, that black box that looks kind of like a picture frame, a little mini picture frame. Okay. And I'm basically going to assign it a fill of none, okay? So even though it's, it shows up as white and you can kind of see it also 
on the uh, upper left hand side here. Um, it was there a second ago. But basically when I click onto it, I'm gonna click onto that little tiny square that looks like a, a, a white square with a red slash, okay? And when I click onto it, you'll see the fill is gonna go from a white fill or a white box over a black outline to now what looks like a um, white square and a red slash over it. And that happens to be over the black fill. Does that make, or a black stroke, I should say. So I'm gonna delete my red arrow. So you should see, and I'll make it into a double column so you can kind of see it really nice and big. You should see this little, what looks like a square uh, with a red slash. And that basically means that the pen tool is going to draw um, only a black outline with no, with no fill on the inside or transparent on the inside, clear on the inside, they say, okay? So if that makes sense, you can give me a little thumbs up. I just wanted to kind of like let you know like, oh, when it use the pen tool, that's kind of how it begins, right? So um, it always has that kind of a setting there. Otherwise, when you draw and you start to see that the your instructions are quote disappearing, it's, it's because of that there's a white fill happening within the image, okay? So just a quick little FYI. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in onto my tool, my artboard here. And if you recall, three ways you can zoom, you can hold down your Alt Option key and scroll, um, scroll up and down to zoom in, okay? You can uh, do a spacebar command and a click on your mouse to zoom in. Um, that, so that's another way you can zoom in on your file there, okay? Uh, you can do command escape or control plus, control minus, I should say. For PCs, obviously it's control plus, control minus. So got to remember my PC folks that are out there. But um, but for the Mac, um, it's you can do command plus, command minus to zoom in and zoom out, okay? So we have our zoom in feature. If you hold down your space bar, you get sort of your hand tool. And what the hand tool will do is allow you to grab onto the artboard and move it around. So that's a, uh, that's a feature that we learned about a little bit last week. If I hold down the space bar, I get a little hand. If I hold down the space bar and do a left click, it grabs the artboard and I can move it anywhere I want. So it kind of feels like shuffling paper in a way. And then simply doing a alt option, zoom in, zoom out, will allow me to zoom in and zoom out on my piece. Space bar to move our piece around. And so you can zoom in, zoom out that way. Okay, so that'll give you a lot of a lot of freedom to move about um, using this pen, uh, pen tool. Okay. Now, pen tool exercises. There's a couple of new things you're going to start to see. Okay, you're going to start to see certain things like a, a corner point sign, a starting a new path sign. Okay, these are like little graphics, little pieces of information on the lower right of your pen tool. So if you see these, don't get uh, alarmed. These are um, little little indicators to tell you where you are in your drawing. And so we're gonna see a lot of those little symbols pop up, okay? We'll also see little forward slashes and circles. The forward slash basically means to add to or continue your path or your vector. Um, so I like to think of it as like forward slash. I'm moving forward in my line and drawing. Closing the path is a circle. So I think of the circle like, oh, you complete me, right? I'm going to complete the shape, close it. So that's the circle. So I like to use a lot of my symbolism for that. And we'll also see uh, not as much, but we'll probably see a little bit of your adding an anchor point uh, path, which is indicated by a plus sign and, po and possibly some minus signs, okay? So adding a po anchor point basically, the plus basically means I can add a point to my drawing. Um, the minus means I can remove a point from my drawing, okay? So the pen tool has like six different tools or, uh, within it uh, or sub tools and it's a pretty powerful tool. And so, um, you know, graduating from college, I didn't feel very confident using the pen tool. Shortly after graduating, I realized very quickly how important it is because it became a very 
common tool in my day-to-day -day life or my day-to-day -day career, I should say. And so um, keep that in the back of your mind too. We'll see a lot of those, but they do, they, they do inform us and help us draw at the end of the day, okay? So, and we haven't even started drawing guys, right? Like if you're feeling like, oh, this kind of feels like, like, like a car. Yeah, there's a lot of bells and whistles to this program. So I th like to think of it like a car. Um, the feature is not in your face and you have to kind of find it at the end of the day. So just a, just a quick reference there. Okay, so let's draw a star, okay? Now, when we draw a star, let's just draw the star, okay? You'll notice the instructions here are in blue um, and some of the exercises have different colors, but in this exercise, instructions are in blue. We're gonna click onto the dark gray uh, circles, but we're gonna follow the light gray path just to kind of know where the lines go. So we're gonna kind of stick within the inside of the, of the grays, so to speak. But we'll drop anchor points on those uh, numbers and create that, okay? So let's go ahead and create our star and we'll drop a point, okay? So pen tool is selected, fill of none, right? Um, black outline, and very simply, I'm just gonna click on number one with the tip of my pen tool, click, okay? Um, when I click, I am basically have a little mini square, that's my anchor point, and then the pen tool is um, sort of following my uh, vector line, or the vector line's following me to kind of figure out where the next point's gonna be, kind of like connecting the dots. So I'm gonna go on two, click, Okay, I'm gonna go to number three, click, and that dark black represents a path or a vector line that's been drawn. We're gonna to go to number four, click, five, click, six, click, okay, seven, click, eight, click, nine, click, 10, click, and we're gonna put the tip of our pen at exactly that same place where the little tiny square is that first time we clicked onto the one. And when I, before I click onto it, I'm gonna see a little circle um, on the lower right-hand side of the pen tool. That circle means I'm about to close the object, complete the shape. Click, and we've successfully drawn our star, okay? So that is what we call a closed vector object, okay? When we see the circle, we close the shape. And if we kind of just get in our heads um, that everything we do in this program typically follows a type of closed vector or object, especially when it comes to producing like t-shirts or, or production ready art, it's all about closing your shape. So this fundamental uh, concept of closing a shape by closing the object is going to be a game changer in your production t-shirt design world, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So, or posters or anything of that sort. Um, it's not necessary, but it sure does help. Um, and you'll see um, shortly when we start doing t-shirts why closing your objects is really important. Um, it basically keeps, it preserves the artwork, allows it to be editable, and I can change colors easily in case I need to change shirt colors and things like that, or, or bag colors, or, um, or anything that's going to get printed onto something, or even a media, or on for web. So that's a fun, small tip there. Okay. We're gonna draw a circle, our curve lines. Now for this one, uh, it's gonna feel a little weird. So just kind of bear with me here and, and then we'll kind of show you the, some of the fundamentals with it, okay? So um, the way I'm gonna explain this, like I did briefly last week, is that I'm basically going to click on number one, drag to number two, or excuse me, I'm going to click, hold the click, drag to number two, release, but I'm not gonna click on number two. So you will hear me say that. You'll hear me say, um, click, hold a click, drag to two, do not click on two. Go to three, click, drag to four, do not click on four. Go to number five, hold down the click, pull six, do not click on six, okay? So, and you'll see why in just a second. So that's, let's go ahead and draw our circle. So we're gonna click, hold the click, drag to number two, release. Okay, do not click on number two. Do not click on number two. We're gonna go to number three. Okay, we're gonna click, hold the click, drag to number four, release. Do not click on four. Okay, do not click on four. We're gonna go to, we're going to go to number five. We're gonna click, hold the click, drag to number six, release. 
do not click on six. Okay, do not click on six. We're gonna go to seven. We're gonna click, hold the click, drag to number eight, release. Do not click on eight. Okay, do not click on eight. We're gonna go back to number one. Okay, see that little circle on the lower right? We're gonna click, hold the click, drag to number two, release, and you're done, okay? If it felt weird, you're good, you're okay, okay? So if you guys successfully created that circle, you can give me a little thumbs up uh, emoji, that'd be great. Just wanna make sure that the circle was successful. And if at any point, guys, you want me to repeat it, you can kind of X me or give me like a little X symbol at any point and I can repeat it. At some point, these exercises will get repeated there, but you got yourself a circle. Okay, so let's kind of talk basics here, okay? So basically what just happened is that you guys are starting to see the difference between a straight line, okay? And a curve line, okay? And I'm going to switch these to red so then that way you can kind of get a little bit of a visual for it and I'll just increase the, uh, the brush stroke so you can kind of see that, okay? So let's kind of break down what just happened there, okay? So when we draw with our pen tool, a the, the pen tool is very sensitive, right? So we said that a click, click is a straight line, like literally just two points and the computer drew the vector, right? Or drew that vector path or vector line for, for you. So it's like connecting the dots, right? So a simple click, click, or point, point is going to draw the line for you, okay? That is very different from the curve. Um, now a curve is a click, and then the second is click, hold the click, pull, okay? So hopefully we kind of caught that difference, right? So instead of a click, click, it's click, click, pull, or click, hold the click on your mouse and pull, and it creates the curve. Does that make sense? So, so now you're starting to discover that there is a big difference between holding my click and moving my mouse versus just clicking and releasing, kind of like pulling the trigger on a, on a gun or a water gun, let's say, right? So how you pull your trigger on your mouse has a lot to do with a straight line and a curved line. Does that make sense? So when, so if you hold a click and pull, you essentially are gonna create a curve. Now, what does that even mean? Like what exactly does the computer do when I create the curve? Well, you notice here in the curve that there is a, uh, a line on the right going to the center here which looks like a blue circle, okay? Think of that, um, that line, that circle to the line as your handle, okay? And that's actually what it is, it's a handle. So from here to here, in that blue line I just drew, that's called a handle. And a handle, I kind of like to think of it as kind of like a, a magnet, right? Where the curve is actually pulling up towards the um, where the curve is actually pulling up towards that uh, circle in the center. So that's kind of the analogy, right? So the curve or the line is bending towards that handle, that circle. Does that make sense? And I can technically move that handle around and change the property or the position of the handle just by selecting the line and clicking and holding onto the handle. So you notice how when I pull to the right, the curve goes and pulls to the right where the magnet or that circle or the handle is. Does that make sense? So anytime I move my handle, the program will bend or the curve will go in that direction. And if I go, if I pull up or out, it bends even more, but pull in, it flattens out. So it, it's very much like a magnet. It almost has like a sort of like a character quality to it. See how that kind of goes, right? So every curved line always follows the handle. And just knowing that the handle has a function 
is really is really really helpful, right? And so you have to have some good, really good um, awareness of the handle because it's really represented by a circle. Um, that's really the only thing that represents it. It's just this blue sort of circle around it, right? And that circle is filled versus a um, anchor point, which is represented by a, uh, a square. So anchor points are typically these squares. They can, um, that have kind of like a, a white fill on the inside. You can kind of see it on my screen, it's really tiny. And then your handles are typically a circle with a filling on the inside, okay? And so if that makes sense, you can give me a little thumbs up emoji. But for me, in, in my head, I'm always looking out for those, those two shapes. Which one's the square? Which one's a circle? Because one is a point and the other one is a handle that pulls the curve anywhere, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So there's a little bit of that information I wanted to download to you, okay? Okay, let's keep drawing. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this line. If you have any questions about anything I say, guys, feel free to stop me, okay? You can, you can stop me and voice in, you can you know, raise your hand, you can type in your question in the chat. I have my, my triple screens going on tonight, so I see everything, okay? Um, so if there's any, any uh, indicator anywhere, then I'll be able to uh, see it clearly on screen um, at any point, okay? All right, so let's talk about multiple curves, okay? And we're gonna keep drawing this together, okay? So we're gonna try this again. We're gonna, and I'll keep to the red. I'm gonna keep my red outline. You don't have to, if it's still black, keep it black. I'll just use red just to, for the sake of the demo so that you guys can see a little more clearly. So for this one, I'm basically going to uh, go to one. I'm gonna drag the two, but I'm not gonna click on two, okay? Because it's a handle, okay? Handles pull the curve. So here's number one. I'm gonna click, hold the click. I'm gonna drag to number two, release. Do not click on number two. Okay, do not click on number two. I'm gonna go to three. I'm gonna click, hold the click, drag down to number four. Okay, question? Oh, okay. Yeah, feel free to stop me at any point. Um, do not click on number four, okay? We're gonna go up to number five. We're gonna click, hold the click, drag up to number six, release. Okay, do not click on number six. Okay, do not click on number six. We're gonna go to number seven. We're gonna click, hold the click, drag down to number eight, release. Okay, do not click on eight. Do not click on eight. Release is simply letting go of your mouse, okay? Um, now, if it's like, oh, Professor, I have an extra line following me after seven and eight, you can hit escape on your keyboard and it disconnects. So. Um, because that could be the question. So yeah, release or let go. Yeah. So, so any point you don't close a shape, but it's following you kind of like what you just saw like a minute ago there. And it's like, Oh, Hey, I can't go to the next one. It's just following me over there. Professor just hit escape. It lets go. So thank you James for that. Um, release equals let go or escape equals let go. Okay. So we got our multiple curves in. Okay. Again, it feels kind of weird. Why? Because we're taking into account the handles. This is the stuff that people don't know or kind of know about the program. The curve is bending towards those handles. Do you see that? So those are handles. That's why we're not clicking in four. Those are because we're all we're doing is leaving handles out. So these handles are there to bend the curve to in the direction of a handle. That's why we have them, okay? If at any point I wanted to go back and change a handle, I could always just use my direct selection tool, click a handle, and it moves the handle, right? And it's all relative too. The program even tries to like smooth out the curve um, behind it and in front of it to kind of save you time and energy from redoing it, redrawing it all over again, okay? So handles is a pretty powerful thing when we know the, the function and the purpose of a handle, okay? Okay, let's try curves with corner points. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to my pen tool. And very simply, I'm, 
I'm just gonna click, hold the click, drag to number two, release. Do not click on number two, do not click on two. Okay. Whoops, don't want that. So, doo -doo -doo. okay. I'm going to go to three, okay? And I'm just going to do something different. I'm gonna click once, click, okay? Okay, and hang tight for just a second. So what I just did was just do one handle and I just click to release, okay? I need a handle now, okay? So how do I get an, a handle? Well, a couple ways you can do that. If you go back to three and hover the tip of your pen over three or the point, the anchor point, the square over three, you'll see this little upside down V, okay? And that V, that upside down V, that tilde, okay? Or arrowhead, it's also been called that sometimes, okay? That is um, basically our, that V represents that I can create a handle, okay? So I'm gonna create or pull a handle out from number three, okay? So when you see that symbol, you're gonna click on three, click, hold the click, and pull a handle out. And go to four, release, do not click on four. Okay, do you see how we kind of did that? So I created a handle, I created one handle, basically by just going back, waiting for that anchor point symbol to appear, right? Or the tilde upside down V to be specific. And I pulled out a handle. So now we're starting to realize that Illustrator can do things like um, create new handles out of nothing, right? Just by how I click onto a point, if that makes sense. So we're gonna do more. And I, and I know that students get a little confused. So the more we do, the more we'll get, we'll get better at it. But I'll try to say it in multiple ways so that we can kind of get a feel and a vibe for it, okay? We're gonna go up to number five now. And we're just gonna click once, click, okay? Created another sort of curve towards the left or a secondary curve that's kind of bending towards the left there, towards that handle in number four. But I wanna pull another handle. So we're gonna do it again. I'm gonna go to number five, okay? And there's that upside down V, there's that arrowhead. So I'm gonna click, hold the click, drag down to number six, I'm gonna pull out a handle. Release, do not click on six, okay? Do not click on six. So created a handle there, right? Pretty cool. And now we're gonna go up to number seven and we're just gonna click once, click, okay? And this time we're just gonna hit escape, okay? So we're gonna release, escape, okay? So in this exercise, we just kind of learn really quick how to create a, a handle from, from, from nothing, from a single anchor point or anchor square, okay? If that makes sense, you can give me a little thumbs up emoji. But this is another way you can create a handle, right? So Adobe Illustrator is pretty versatile, right? Like there's like three different ways to do the same thing. And so, the only way we're going to know these things is really just by doing it, right? And kind of and kind of learning th from our from our drawings. That's really how it kind of goes there. Um, it can be a bit of a pain, but I wouldn't call it a pain as it is more uh, so much of like just a muscle that's just starting to get flexed for the first time. So it does take a little bit of practice, okay? Um, but it helps build a little bit more structure so that we can kind of get a feeling for it if that makes sense, right? So it's like, um, it is, it feels weird, I'll say that, because the first time I started doing this, I was like, man, I thought it was all about just drawings, and it is. Um, you know, if you have like a Wacom pad or, uh, or a tablet, then you could do that, right? And just draw like we did with our brush tools or, or draw with our pen tool. Um, but the handles are there to edit. And the, and the squares, the anchor points, are there to move points around at any point. So, you know, the, the big difference between a computer and paper is, you know, you know with, on paper, you, can, you have to erase and redraw. On a computer, 
you just move the point and the handle and and that's how you redraw if that makes sense okay so you're just moving things and points around um it's 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 what they call non-destructive or impermanent or non-permanent um it's flexible and so just understanding how the computer moves points around um and moves handles around to redraw things quote unquote that's the stuff that really most of the class talks about and we kind of go through and still try to be creative at the same time right so it's all muscle memory so this is very much a muscle memory exercise of anything that we're going to hit hard for the next uh, uh sessions in class okay all right let's keep going and we're going to do curves of corner points okay now this one's definitely going to feel a little weird okay i'm going to forewarn you that um, everything's kind of the same but i'm going to introduce um the alt option key and we're going to move handles with alt option key with the alt option key I know it doesn't make sense, but be aware you're, you'll likely use your left hand. If, you, if you're a right-handed person, you'll probably use your left hand to hold down the alt option key as you move your mouse up with the right. Okay. Um, so uh, let's jump into it and let's take a look. Okay. All right. So we're going to start off fairly the same. I'm going to click, hold the click, drag up to number two, release. Do not click on two. Okay, do not click on two. We're going to go down to three. We're going to click, hold the click, drag down to number four. Okay. Release. Do not click on four. Do not click on four. Now with your left hand, okay, you're going to hold down the Alt Option key. Okay. And when you hold down the Alt Option key, you're going to see that upside down V really big. Okay. Going to go from this to now really big because I'm holding the alt option key. So you're going to hold down the alt option key, but don't let go. Okay. Do not let go. And you're going to take the, your mouse and you're going to slide down to number back to number four. And where it says five, hold down option, alt of the alt option key. Basically you're going to take the tip of that, V, that upside down V, the tilde, you're going to take the tip of it and try to get to the very center of that handle, that circle of the end of the handle. Okay. So it's going to require a little bit of target practice and I'm going to click, hold the click. Okay. It converts to kind of like a black handle. I'm going to move my mouse up and move that handle up to number six. Okay. Release the mouse first. Release the Alt Option key. And don't click on six. So do not click on six. Okay. Do not click on six. Okay. We're going to try that again. Okay. And it, I know it's a little weird, but we're going to try that again. Okay. So let's try that again. We're going to go to seven. Okay. We're going to click. We're going to go to seven. We're going to click. We're going to hold the click. Okay. I'm going to keep my hand up if, if I'm on camera. Um, okay. So I'm just going to click on seven, click, hold the click, drag down to number eight. Okay. Release. Okay. I'm not holding down the all option key. Not yet. Okay. Do not click on eight. Do not click on eight. Okay. Now let's take our left hand. I'm going to hold down that alt, alt option key. There's the upside down V in the center of the screen there. Okay. That upside down V. I'm going to go to eight, take the tip of the, that upside down V or that tilde in the center of my handle, that circle. And I'm going to click, hold the click and I'm going to move that handle up. And number 10, release the mouse, release your left Alt option key, do not click on 10, do not click on number 10. Okay. All right. I'm going to do it a couple more times. Let's try it again. I'm going to go to my mouse. Okay. I'm not going to use my left hand yet. So I'm just using my right hand for now. I'm going to 
click, hold the click, drag down to number 12, okay? Release, okay, do not click on 12, okay? Do not click on 12. Now take that left hand, okay? Hold down the Alt Option key. I see my upside down V, my tilde. Back to 12 inside that little uh, circle, the tiny circle of the handle. I'm gonna click, hold the click on my mouse, drag up to number 14, okay? Release the mouse, release the Alt Option key. Okay, do not click on 14, okay? Do not click on 14. And to finish it off, we're gonna go to 15, okay? Click, hold the click, drag down to number 16. Release, do not click on 16. Do not click on 16, hit escape on your keyboard. Boom, you're done, okay? Kind of weird, right? If that was successful, you, you can give me a little quick thumbs up emoji if you guys had a little bit of success, success towards that, okay? All right, a little bit lower on the on the thumbs up. Okay, um, but we'll repeat a couple if we need to. But basically what we just saw was that you can use your Alt Option key to move handles around in mid drawing, okay? So the uh, Alt Option key can uh, pre-program handles, move them around uh, while you're clicking onto your mouse. So. This is a good example of how sensitive the program can be and how much a simple click of a, of a button and a, how a pushing of one button and a left click on your mouse at the same time can change a function of a tool completely. Okay, if that makes sense. So um, let's keep it going. And we're gonna try combining curves with straight lines. And this one's gonna be interesting too, because we're gonna to try to um, eliminate or kill a handle as I kind of coined it and see what that looks like, okay? So in this one, there's a, a straight line happening here, but I have a quick little trick on how you can just eliminate a handle um, quickly slash pull one out um, while using your Alt Option key, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, we're gonna go to number one, okay? I'm going to pen tool it up. Okay, I'm gonna click, hold the click, drag up to number two. Okay, release. Do not click on number two. Okay, do not, do not click on number two. I'm gonna go down to number three. I'm going to Click, hold the click, drag down to number four, release. Okay, do not click on number four. Okay, do not click on number four. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is the reverse of the handle, okay? The last exercise, we like pull the handle out. In this exercise, I wanna kill the handle or delete the handle in its entirety. So, when I click on to number five, I want it to be a straight line. Um, and that handle is on number four is really bugging me. So what do I do to delete the handle, um, which is from three to four? Very simple. All I have to do is go back to number three. And when I see the upside down V, the tilde, right? Uh, or, that, uh, or that little delta symbol, on the lower right of my pen tool. When I see that, that's your sign to click once on three and the handle disappears from, from three to four. That means it's like starting a new point. And notice how it's a straight line now. So now that pre line is saying, oh, I got a straight line ready for you. Okay. So we wanna go to six, okay. And just click once, click. Okay, but now the next one is gonna be a curve, right? So like in the last exercise, I'm gonna hold down my Alt Option key. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt Option key with my left hand, left finger, 
Take the mouse, take the tip of that delta or that tilde there. Go to this, go back to five, or excuse me, slash six. And I'm basically, see that little upside down V? I'm gonna click, hold the click, and I'm just gonna pull that handle out to number seven. Okay, release the mouse, release the Alt Option key. Okay, and we're gonna go up to number eight. And very simply, I'm just gonna click, hold the click, and drag up to number nine. Okay, release. Okay, do not click on number nine. Okay, do not, cl do not click on number nine. And we're gonna do it again, right? Now, I wanna click on to 10 slash 11, but I don't want that curve, that pre-line being a curve. I want it to be a straight line. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna kill that handle. We're gonna kill the handle that is from eight to nine. And the way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna go back to its root, the home, the origin of that handle, which is at where number eight is located. You can kind of see the tip of my pen over that anchor point and that upside down V is your symbol, your indicator, your delta, your indicator that you can delete that handle going up to number nine. So we're just gonna click once with the mouse, click. Handle's gone. My pre-line um, is straight. So I know now that the next line will likely be a straight line, okay? We're gonna go to number 11. And very simply, I'm just gonna click once, click, okay? Very easy, okay? I'm gonna hold down my Alt Option key again. See the upside down V, that tilde, the delta symbol. Put the tip back where 10, 11 is. I'm gonna click, hold the click, drag up to number 12, release the mouse, release the Alt Option key with your left hand. And with your right hand on the mouse, you're gonna to go to 13. You're gonna click, hold the click, drag down to number 14. Release, do not click on 14. Okay, do not click on 14 and hit escape on your keyboard and you're done. Okay, at least for that exercise. Okay, if that was successful, you can give me a little thumbs up emoji just to kind of make sure. Okay, so that's a good sign. So what, so what we're starting to feel now is so, something kind of weird, right? So this whole holding down the option key and pulling a handle out, going back, seeing the, the tilde or that delta symbol and deleting it. This is a lot of what this program is. Um, knowing what each symbol is based on the location, okay? So it is very, it's a, it's a very sensitive program. And so it's always important to kind of keep a, an awareness of your, of your line art at all, at all points, okay? Okay, we're at 8.01, so we're at the top of the hour. Just out of curiosity, do we wanna take a, a short five minute break and get ready for this uh, combo at the bottom, okay? Or do we want to finish this one up? So maybe you want to, you can type it in, okay? If you want a break, type in break. We'll take a quick five minute break. And then if you want um, to just finish, we can type in finish and you can, you can finish the exercise. I'm just curious to know how many of us need a break? How many of us just want to finish that exercise uh, and then go from there? Okay. All right, so far we got a couple of finishers. All right, cool. All right, we'll finish it up. All right. All right, and then from there, uh, we'll take a quick five minutes. Okay, all right, so here's, this one's gonna be interesting because it's gonna be a combination of the previous exercises. So let's, let's jump in, shall we? Okay, so in this one, um, I'm gonna hold down, actually, let's do this. I'm, we're gonna go to one on the left, okay? And also, just so that I'm playing it safe as well, let's make sure too that you can relatively see most of the instructions. So if you're zoomed out to like 65% or you can see most of the numbers, like one on the left, 12 on the top, eight to the right and six to the bottom, we wanna make sure we see those because we're gonna be dragging some handles around. So if you could see like what, what, you, what I see on my screen, You'll be in good standing okay that way you don't have to like adjust or move or tap the 
the artboard. Okay. So let's go ahead and start at number one. I'm gonna click, hold the click. Okay, drag, drag to number two. Okay, release. Okay, do not click on number two. Okay, do not click on number two. Okay, we're gonna go to number three over here. I'm going to click, hold the click. Okay, drag down to number four. Okay, uh, release. Okay, do not click on number four. Okay, do not click on number four. All right. I'm gonna take my left hand, okay? And I'm gonna hold down that Alt Option key. And when I do, I'm gonna see the little upside down V or that Delta symbol, okay? And I'm going to go back to four and put the tip of that arrow, that upside down V in the center of that circle of the handle where number four is. And I'm basically gonna click, hold the click, and I'm gonna drag down to number six. Okay, release on the mouse, release on the keyboard. Okay, do not click on number six. Okay, do not click on number six. Okay, we're gonna go up to number seven over here. Okay, and I'm very simply going to click, hold the click, drag to the right here, it's a number eight. Okay, release, do not click on number eight. Okay, do not click on number eight. Okay, I'm gonna take my left hand, hold down the Alt Option key on my keyboard. I'm gonna take the tip of that delta, the tip of that V, okay, or the upside down V, I should say. Put it into the handle at number eight. Okay, I'm gonna click, hold the click. So Alt Option and click are being held. And I'm gonna swing eight down past nine, all the way over to number 10. Okay, release on the mouse, release on the Alt Option button. Do, do not click on number 10. Okay, do not click on number 10. I'm gonna locate 11 up here towards the center of my screen. And it's like to the left of three. And I'm basically very simply going to click, hold the click, drag up to number 12. Okay, that's past 14, above 14. I'm gonna go up to number 12, release, okay. Do not click on number 12, okay. Do not click on number 12, all right. I'm gonna hold down the Alt Option button with my left hand to see the upside down V, okay? And with my mouse, I'm gonna take the tip of that tilde, that delta, the V, okay? I'm gonna click in the center of the handle in 12, and I'm gonna click, hold the click, drag down to number 14. Okay, release on your mouse, release on the Alt Option key. Okay, do not click on 14. Okay, do not click on 14. Okay, I'm gonna go back to number one or where 15 is, it's technically one. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go to 15 here on the left. I'm gonna hover my mouse over 15. Okay, okay, I see the little circle on the lower right kind of hiding behind the word alt there. Okay. And essentially, I'm going to hold down the Alt Option key first. So hold down the Alt Option key with your left hand, click, hold the click on one, and pull to the left to 16. Okay, that's 16. Yes, 16. Release on the mouse, release on the Alt Option, and you're done. Okay. Okay. Now, if that was complete and you got what you see there on your screen, it looks kind of like mine. Give me a little thumbs up emoji. Congratulations for completing that. Okay. It felt different. It felt weird. That is completely okay. 
this is kind of what it's like to draw using your pen tool, okay? So very, very different, okay? Okay, um, we're at 808. Okay, let me go ahead and stop it there. So let's take a quick break, okay? We'll talk about what just happened within the last 30 to 40 minutes, okay? And we will basically um, cover some of those basic, answer any questions or comments to go from there. So if you want to type in your comments or questions during the break, feel free, and I'll answer those when we get back. Let's go, let's, uh, let's go, uh, let's see, let's go for 10. Is that cool? Let's take a quick 10 minute break and um, we'll come back and set that up because I could feel like everyone's brains like burning out there. And I have a little guy over here asking for me too. He wants to say hi. So you want to say hi to the people. You want to say hi to the class? Yeah, I want to take one in the bathroom. Oh, you want to take this one in the bathroom? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Are you going to take a bath? Is that why? No, I'm going to take my phone in the bathroom. Oh, okay. I'll give it to you there. Okay. Um, here, you can grab it right now. Okay. All right. Did not even say hi. Just wanted a phone. Okay. <laughs> teenager before their teens anyways um okay so let's go ahead and go for 10 um we'll cut we'll, we'll kick back at 8 uh 8 20 and uh and, and enter any questions comments or anything about it and then we'll check back in with everybody and continue with exercise number two okay all right guys we'll see you in a few all right now we're good okay all right guys so welcome back um so Basically, um, I a couple of things um, just, just regarding the pencil exercise. Um, the whole goal of the exercise is to eventually get everyone to like, is to um, get familiar with the muscle uh, and the tool and the, really the, like all the nuances when it comes to drawing or tracing or using the pen tool so that when it gets to a point where you're feeling like, comfortable with it or just somewhat starting to get familiar with it and then I cut the instructions and then we start to just draw without instructions does that kind of make sense and so the the, the idea here is just to kind of get familiar with this this tool that most students on average are like man this tool is just like like no other right um there's a lot obviously this is a much more structured type of tool and if you're more like interested in like more free flowing things, like, yes, there's the pencil tool, there's we, the brush tool. And, you know, those tools are, are obviously allow you to uh, uh, draw things more freely, right? But what pen tool kind of offers us is some structure um, and also opens up the editing side of, of the vector lines and the vector illustrations, right? Because you can brush something but and, and still come and still have handles and anchor points things of that sort and so um at the end it's kind of like hitting at two things at one time okay um the other thing too that just kind of came to mind is that if i go to my uh deck here and i forgot to mention that but the pen tool is when you get this technique down Technically, this tool also follows in Adobe uh, InDesign and Photoshop, okay? So one tool that we learn in this class will technically work in um, two other programs, okay? So that's a, that's a benefit, right? That's a, that's, a, that's a huge value. So if you could use this tool in Illustrator, then Photoshop has the same tool for editing, even drawing into Photoshop if you want to do the same thing. And of course, InDesign. So um, three programs, we're hitting three programs with one tool and focusing them. I think that's that's good, that's beneficial, that's, that's value, right? So just kind of something there I wanted to kind of include, okay? So um, what are your thoughts? What are your kind of uh, feelings on it so far up to this point? Is it feeling pretty good to you? Um, is, there, is it easier than you expected? Is it a little challenging, right? But what's your thoughts? What are you, um, what are some sentiments that you're kind of feeling, uh, feeling? And then share with me a little bit and get a, let's get a little bit of a sense of what the class is feeling there. So 
you might feel it's a little bit challenging. Okay, we're starting. That's totally fine. Uh, we'll get better, right? Um, all students eventually get better when they jump in on this. So that's, that's helpful. So let me change that really quick. And we'll get better. So no worries in there, okay? Is everyone else feeling pretty good about it for the most part? Are you guys feeling like it's pretty comfortable nothing too complicated? Okay, feels weird, but we're indeed starting out. Anything we'll feel where we're first learning something. Okay, yeah, for sure. So something needs to get used to. Okay, so we'll, that's, we'll keep doing more and that's sort of the, the, the goal for it, okay? Um, that being said, um, let me kind of walk through on the saving repetition, not too complicated, clean lines. Okay, yeah, this is great. Ambidextrous, yes. <laughs> that's a good analogy, James. Um, yeah, to do two things at one time. It's funny, that's, that's a pretty good way of kind of looking at it as well. Like, how do we, how do, we do two things at one time, essentially, kind of like playing that. Or if you're a gamer, yeah, there you go. If you're a gaming, then kind of like doing that with the gaming. Okay, cool. All right, well, that's awesome. Not used to uh, 2D design. I have only been doing 3D. Okay. So, yeah, definitely some, sim some similarities, some differences there. And cool. Okay. Well, we'll definitely get better as we go. So, um, let's, um, on that note, let's actually talk a little bit about um, uploads and, and how to save that file. Okay because we kind of went over that a little bit last week. Um, I'll just kind of go over it this week. So, um, and before we do any saving, uh, would anyone want me to try to repeat any of the steps at, at this point? Um, or would like for me to repeat a certain exercise? Um, it's totally fine. Um, and we can do that. Oh, Alexis, I just saw your post here. Uh, do the last one again. Yeah, we could do the last one again. Um, we could definitely set that up. Um, uh, before we do, let me, walk the, let me walk everyone really quick on saving your file and then how you can obviously upload that to Canvas for exercise assignment number one. So that way we can start including that for points, okay? So uh, we'll go over the, the saving portion of your file on there, and then we'll go back to the last exercise and redo that, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna switch back to Adobe Illustrator here. Let me get back to the meeting. Where were my tools? Screen saves. And we'll switch over to Adobe Illustrator, Google Chrome, here we go. And I'll move my window out of the way here. Okay, so um, before we repeat this exercise, um, well, let's just talk a little bit about um, saving your files, okay? So if we wanna save the file, um, it's like any other program um, for saving. And let's go ahead and actually increase my screen to uh, the full desktop so you can see that. Um, but essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna save your file, okay? Now to save your file, we're gonna go up to the upper left here and we're just gonna locate file, okay? In the Illustrator program. Whenever we wanna we want change the name of a file, um, we hit a save as, okay? And what's, when you look at save as, there's like these three dots in front of the, the word as. Uh, those three dots basically means or represent that there's a menu that pops up after you click onto it, which is essentially um, this menu here, which is the save as sort of menu. Has meta tags, locations on where you can save it, and you can even save it as a cloud print if you want to as well. And so um, really helpful and beneficial there, okay? Um, what we're gonna do is we're just basically gonna save this file under your name, okay? Um, and replace the original one with this new one with your new name. So you're gonna rename it to um, you basically your first name, last name, pencil exercise part one, and you'll save it onto the desktop, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna just kind of repeat the steps. I'm gonna click on the file. Go down to save as, okay. And there, there you go. 
not a problem. And where it says save as, right? I'm going to click my cursor before the P in pen tool. Okay, and you're gonna see a flashing cursor before that P. Um, from here, you can type in your first name, space, last name, space, followed by that title name, pencil exercise part one. Delete the fifth version of that because I've done it five times already. Okay. And where it's below that, where it says tags, um, we won't worry about tags at the moment. Um, tags are just like uh, classifications of importance. So we'll, we'll save on the meta tags a little later, but we will change the location from like downloads to uh, let's select like your desktop, okay? And if you want to expand and get even more specific on where on your desktop you wanna put this file, right? Um, you can click onto the arrow on the right hand side, which is a little drop down uh, arrow here. And it's gonna expand your where or the file where to a much bigger interface where you can um, basically uh, determine where on your desktop downloads or even your documents folder, you want to store your files, okay? And um, you can even search on the right-hand side certain files and even change um, on the left-hand side here from uh, a list to icons and see very specifically where you want to store your files, okay? Um, because it is a new file, uh, we want to get into the habit of creating folders and saving our files in folders. That's going to give us um, organization, right? Um, uh, one of the things that designers are kind of notorious for not doing is keeping their files organized. So as, as you're starting your journey in this field, um, I will, you know, be the, one of the first, you know, instructors to let you know that saving your files is very important. And you always want to save your files in a structured format. Okay, um, you know I like to save my files, you know, according to my name or the program or the pro or the or the or the name of the school in this situation. And, and of course, this is more like name of the courses. Um, but we're going to call our folder the name of your uh, program. So we'll just say Illustrator for right now. Okay, how do we create a new folder? We're going to click on the lower left hand side where this little button here um, says new folder okay let's make sure that desktop is selected as well so I always want to make sure that the desktop is selected because you can technically create a folder in any one of these uh, favorites on the left column but we're going to uh, highlight desktop click on to new folder and in that new folder you'll see a pop-up which will basically say, oh, what do you want to call your new, uh, new folder? Because right now it's untitled folder, highlighted with a little bit of a blue coloring around it. I'm just gonna type in here, um, just an Illustrator uh, for my folder to indicate my Illustrator files. If you want to call it, you know, name of the course, that's fine. You can call it, you know, GDSM 164 you can. But since we're going to have a lot of programs, a lot of applications there, either or is fine, whichever you feel, or GDSN 164, or Illustrator, whichever you feel comfortable with. I'm going, to tap, I'm going to click onto the Create button on the lower right, Create. And basically, the program will automatically open the folder. And you'll see um, at the top there that it's already been selected. So right about here it says Illustrator, which is the name of the folder that I just created. And I can now click save on the lower right. And it will save the file in that folder. So save. Gonna ask for options. And we'll save it under the version that's available. So if this is a 2020 version, which is compatible with the earlier, that's fine. We can set it up that way, so that's no problem at, uh, at all. So we'll go that direction. 
We're going to click OK to that. All your pre-settings is fine. And immediately as you come back to your main screen, you're going to notice that the little tab on the upper left here um, kind of looks like a little dark square. Inside that tab is the rename file. So I can see my name right there where the arrow is pointing at. Um, in that tab, that is the name. Um, and I know that the file is saved under my name. Okay, so that's my indicator. So from here, I can basically go to um, Canvas or my Canvas class shell, and I can upload the file to my assignment. Okay. So now that we have the assignment here on my screen, dental exercise part one, then you can easily just click on to uh, start assignment on the upper left. And right here on the bottom, you can upload your file by choosing your file within the Illustrator uh, folder, okay? Which of course you wanna make sure you click onto the desktop, locate your folder, which is Illustrator, click, click, or open, and then highlight your file and click open from there. Okay, immediately you'll see the name of the file there and you can hit submit assignment right here on the right and it'll send the file my way okay so um that is a uh the easy way to upload your illustrator files and um and i'll be able to preview them download them open them up so that's really really helpful so you'll basically be um, uploading illustrator files at the end of the day toward this direction if you want to save them as a PDF file, for those that are more tech savvy, you can. Um, I have no problem with that as well, okay? And this is just one format as we do um, our next project, like our teacher project. Um, then I'll walk you through how to save for the cloud and how we'll monitor um, via online, how to save, uh, basically how to save your file for Creative Cloud access, okay? All right. So that is how you turn in your Pencil Exercise Part 1 assignment. And I wanted to get that on video so then that way we can um, support those folks that uh, are not in class today. Or if you want to go back to the video and kind of redo the steps at any point, you can do that as well. Okay. All right. If that's making sense, you can give me a little thumbs up emoji. And then um, we'll go ahead and have everybody upload if you got it done. And then I'm going to quickly go through the next exercise, or not the next exercise, excuse me, the the last um, redraw so that we can kind of redo those steps if that, if that helps, okay? Now, if you're feeling confident um, and want to move on to pen tool exercise part two and get a little bit of a head start, then let's um, feel free. As a matter of fact, um, give me one more minute there, Alexa, so I can uh, kind of mention that. But we can get you set up um on your file there and let's see we're gonna go to uh, our class page come down to week six mastering the pen tool and for the next exercise, if you guys want to get a little bit of a head start with that, um, you can click on to assignment here, which is Pento exercise two, three, and four, basic and complicated shapes. And here I actually give you uh, one, two, three uh, short sample videos where I do uh, two letters for the word vector, which is the next um, exercise, uh, part two. Um, and then for uh, exercise three and four, I also, I have the, uh, I did two basic drawings uh, and two complicated drawings to kind of give you an example of how to do that without instructions. So we're slowly heading towards um, no instructions there. Um, the link is here on the bottom, which is the four files and it's a, it's a bundle. And because we did part one, um, pencil exercise part one, I'm actually gonna move 
that or you can I'm actually let's see can I lock that because we already did part one you don't have to download part one because we kind of did that together as a class but I included it here as a bundle you can move on to part two um, which is mental exercise part two vector and this basically um, is the same format when you double click onto it it should open up the link, which will allow you to download it as a vector file. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is the one. And then I'll go ahead and I'll put that link here in the chat as well to save you guys a little bit of time if you want to get a little bit of a head start. Okay. So here it is, Pentel Exercise Part 2. Feel free to download it, and then um, and then if you want to run through a bit of the exercise, that's great. You'll basically be clicking onto the format's a little different, but you'll be clicking onto um, or drop or creating anchor points on the circle X. So wherever X is, that's X marks the spot. That's where you're going to click your anchor points to create those. Uh, formats and then of course we'll have to zoom in and do command plus 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 there to uh, come in so this one's a little different you'll ba basically you'll um, create um, follow the instructions by reading what's on top outside slash click on the inside which is the blue circle with um, white x in the center okay um, just remember to um, and I'll just draw this really quick. Remember to give it a fill of none, because as you can see, there's already white as my, as my presetting. So whenever you're creating um, an illustration, you definitely want to make sure that you click onto your fill color, which is going to be not there, but oh, let me double check actually. I'm not showing my Illustrator program, so it's probably confusing a couple of folks. So let me go ahead and repeat that really quick. So like I was saying, um, we're going to basically clear that, move here, delete that. So yes, so like I was saying, on the left for the toolbar, okay, we want to make sure that for the left-hand side of your toolbar, that you give it a fill of none. So right over here in the red arrow, we're gonna give that a fill of none because it's currently white. So we click onto the red slash, black outline, pen tool is clicked on, which is P for uh, pen tool right there on the third arrow. And as you're drawing, you're going to drop points inside the blue uh, circles right here as you're drawing. Okay. So a little different on this version, but we're going to essentially just drop points there as you're drawing it. Okay. So we'll click a point, click a point, and continue to click and click as you go all around the letter. Okay. So I just wanted to give you guys just a quick little precursor on that before we can uh, set you loose and do a little bit of drawing there, okay? Okay, all right, so let's give it a go. I, I predict that the letter C and the letter O will probably present some challenges along with the letter R, and we'll try our best to cover those once we, get, once we cross that bridge. But let me go ahead and um, work on the redraw really quick for those folks that will I can do the redraw. So let me go ahead and set this up while the rest of the class um, is working on pencil exercise part two. Okay. Okay. So, um, so Alexis, I know you said that you wanted to do this again. So I'm going to run through this again on pencil exercise part one. Okay. So let's go ahead and redo that one more time. And over here, the idea is, is that I want to make sure I get to see a little bit of everything on my screen. Okay, so I should be able to see um, 12 all the way on the top, 
eight on the right, 16 on the far left, and six on the bottom, just so I can move my mouse around pretty, pretty effectively, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. So we should see that, that's the first part, okay? Um, I'm gonna select my pen tool, so P for pen tool, okay? So I love none. You can it can be red or black. I'm just going to make it red for the sake of the demo, so you can see it clearly. Um, and I'm essentially going to start at one on the left. Okay. So where one is over here, uh, I'm going to start there. Okay. So let's go ahead and drop a point. I'm going to click, hold the click, drag up to number two. Okay. Release. Okay. Do not click on number two. Okay, do not click on number two. I'm gonna go to number three. Okay, I'm gonna click, hold the click, drag down to number four, release. Okay, do not click on number four. Okay, do not click on number four. Um, I'm gonna go and hold down the Alt Option key with my left hand, okay? And I'm just going to hold down Alt Option key. And I'm going to see this sort of upside down uh, delta or the delta or upside down V. And I'm, ba and I'm basically going to take the tip of that sort of upside down V and put that right where the handle is on number four, where the circle or the center of the circle. And I'm going to click and hold and pull four down to number six. Okay. And I'm going to release that, click on the mouse, release, Alt Option, do not click on number six, okay? Do not click on number six. Okay, we're going to swing to number seven here on the right. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, hold the click, drag up to number eight, okay? Release, okay, do not click on number eight. Okay, do not click on number eight. Okay, I'm gonna hold down the Alt Option key with my left hand, okay, to see the upside down V or the delta. I'm gonna put that in the center of eight. Okay, I'm gonna click, hold the click, drag down to number 10 there, towards like the mid center uh, bottom half or bottom third of the screen. Okay, release the mouse, release the Alt Option. Okay, do not click on number 10. Okay, do not click on number 10. Okay, and I'm gonna look for number 11. 11 is up there, kind of to the left of three. And I'm going to click, hold the click, drag up the handle past 14, all the way up to number 12. Release. Okay, do not click on number 12. Okay, do not click on number 12. Go hold down the Alt Option key. See the little upside down V. Okay, take my mouse with my right. Okay, click, hold the click. Slide really slowly down to number 14. Okay, release with your mouse. Release with the Alt Option key. Okay, do not click on 14. Do not click on 14. And I'm going to go to 15, which is really the same point as number one. Okay. I'm going to uh, click, hold, oh, no, one more set. Actually, let's stop. Hold down the Alt Option key first. Be the circle. Click, hold the click, hold to 16. Release the mouse, release the Alt Option, and you're done. Okay. Hopefully that came out better. I don't know if it did or not. Give me a little thumbs up if it was successful. I hope it was. Kind of sort of. Cool, okay, perfect. All right, so awesome, you're welcome. So um, that's kind of how it works, right? So um, a little different, but you got it. So um, we'll go ahead and you know save that file. So um, on the upper left-hand side where it says save, Okay, um, we'll hit file, save as. And then we'll make sure that we save that file. Uh, switch over to the 
bigger desktop version there. Okay, perfect. And we're basically going to uh, click File, Save As. And then you'll enter basically um, your first name, last name before the P and Pintle. So you click um, right behind the P and type in your first name, last name. And you can save it onto your desktop by selecting a new folder. And you can call that your Illustrator uh, folder um, at the end of the day, kind of like what I have on uh, my format over here in the upper right. Okay. So desktop on the left, new folder on the uh, right below that. It'll call it Illustrator, hit save, and it should save it within your Illustrator folder. And once it does, it's basically going to ask you for what version. So Illustrator 2020 is fine. Click OK to that, and you're all set. And then that file can be uploaded to Canvas. Okay. All right, very cool. All right, guys. So let's take a peek. And we're gonna, let's see, um, do a quick check in. Now for the next exercise, guys, I can let you guys kind of work through it. It looks like you guys are, kind of, are working through it on your own. Um, if there's a question, I can jump in for letter C or I can go letter by letter. I don't, not right there. I know I have a couple of videos. It seems like you guys are going pretty good, but um, kind of checking to see. So far, so good. Okay. Okay, cool. If there's a specific question on a letter, let me know. Okay. And um, you can type it in the chat or voice it in the audio um, or uh, open up video and you can ask the question and I'll walk you through it. But I think let's use maybe the last 30 minutes of class to kind of let you guys work independently on those exercises and then I'll step in if you have a question. Okay. Cool. All right, guys, we'll give it a go. I'll kind of work like silently in the background. So I'll share my screen just so that you can at least see it. I'll put my mic on mute and then I'll just kind of like work through it myself in case you have any questions.
Okay. All right, guys. Um, we're at 927. Uh, we got about three more minutes left. Um, and from the looks of it, it seems like everyone's doing okay and kind of getting into the hang of it. So I'm glad you got some time to work on it this evening. And just out of curiosity, um, did anyone get as far as the uh, exercise number three by any chance or kind of went to, or is kind of in number three right now? Okay, that's good. Um, and so a, few of our, a few of you guys are on number four too. Okay, great, that's awesome. So you're jamming, this is great. We're ahead of the game. Um, I anticipate Thursday that we'll kind of cover some of the, high, some of the most um, some of the most challenging letters and, and parts of exercise uh, two and three. And I'm pretty sure I have a feeling that we'll get started on basic and complicated shapes on Thursday as well. So how to draw without instructions. So um, I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling pretty good at, about the pace. So once we get to that and basically put a little bit of time on practice, I'm pretty sure that by next Tuesday, we should be on our collage like building um not an abstract face but just kind of like um a collage a face using the collages uh the shapes of the basic and complicated or the basic and complicated shapes i should say we'll make a face or a collage of a face or a character of your choice so i think the pace is good um i think at the end of the day if you're feeling pretty good and feeling pretty good about where you're at and the draw and you and you're comfortable or feeling like it's manageable, I think you're in a good spot, um, which I'm pretty sure everyone's feeling. Um, if you're feeling like it's really complicated, then then at some point we, let's talk, um, and and it might be just like one little trick or technique that that may have been missed or something that might be like kind of confusing, um, because sometimes it, you could have a, a, a like a, I call it a trigger finger, where you might be so quick to like click on your mouse that you're like not waiting for your other hand to react. So I've seen that a few times here and there, but I, I don't, I don't think it's everyone in the class. Okay. Um, so I think we're, I think we're moving really, really well. Um, so we'll do that for Thursday, take us into next week. And then um, I am, I'm just throwing it out to keep that on your radar. Um, I am contemplating about possibly opening up like a, like a Friday for just kind of like a hangout. So nothing crazy, Friday night, um, you know, I'm thinking Uptown Whittier, you know, nothing too late. You're on your way home from work or out of class. Want to swing by, have, have a drink, say hello. I'm okay with that. So I think that'd be kind of cool and just kind of put a face <laughs> to, to what it is. We don't have to be, we're not in lockdown, right? We're not in quarantine. So, you know, I think it'd be a, a good thing. So put that on your radar. I'm thinking of possibly the 22nd um, out there. And uh, so like maybe about two weeks, a little over two weeks. So throwing it out there. And then um, not the 29th um, there. Um, I'm thinking about the Uptown Brewery, um, Uptown Whittier Brewery. It was like right in the heart of Uptown. So they have like an outdoor area. It's kind of like a beer garden. Um, you know, restaurants at the Nixon building, um, you know, music out there, little lights and stuff like that. Um, I'm okay with that, you know? So I think it'll be nice. I think it'd be kind of cool. It's a public space. Um, so um, I think it'll be pretty convenient for everybody there. Awesome. There you go. And for a few guys, it's, it's kind of local and for others, it might be um, not too far away. So it's very close to Rio Hondo, basically. So if you, if, if Rio, it's like, 10 minutes away from Rio. So um, that's, um, that would be helpful. There you go. So it sounds like a central location for everyone. So just throwing it out there. Let's get that on the radar. If it's interesting, which it sounds like it might be, we'll, I'll, throw, I'll throw out a little invite. Uh, we'll keep the conversation going. How about that? And we'll see how, how everyone's schedule is looking and things of that sort. So I think it'll be really fun. Okay. All right. All right, guys, and, uh, and like I said, um, give me a few more days to, to grade all your papers. So once I'm done, your scores will get updated. But if, um, so I'll just need a, a couple more days there. But if you have uploaded it and it shows that it's uploaded, then it's just a, just a couple more days before I get caught up with all the papers and reading and making sure everything's set, okay? So we're good. All right, guys. Well, congratulations on launching the pencil exercise. You're on your way now to becoming independent designers. 
Um, and we are now in the application stages. So this is all technical from here on in slash bringing in the theory along the way, but we're now uh, going deep on technical aspects and technical tools while still encouraging the, the critical thinking. So expect to see more little principles of designs and class-wide like deconstructions of artwork just to keep that muscle going and keep looking at things and keep photographing and look at some of those links and be find places that people don't look at that you can get inspired and keep that in your little tool belt of ideas and you'll come to find that you'll have a huge supply of, of ideas for your careers and for your hobbies and for your businesses uh, moving forward okay all right be well guys have a good night you are dismissed get some rest you deserve it bye bye see you on Thursday. All right, Lake. We'll see you then.